Let me just start by saying that I had an interesting introduction to the crew that put together this conference. Earlier this year, shortly after we took office, certainly within the first couple of months, I was going through one of my days and um, came whistling into a meeting in the governor's office with the Medal of Honor committee that was planning its event here in Boston. Shook hands with a number of the folks and sat down and, and I said, look, whatever it is we can do here in the Commonwealth to help you, I'm, I'm in with both feet. You represent all that's great about this country and, and if we can help you in any way, we'll be happy to. And there's a grizzled fella sitting at the table who looked over and said, I want to ride in a helicopter. And I sort of said, I'll write that down, yeah. Um, so we had the rest of our meeting and and at the end of those meetings, usually we do photo photographs, and so there was an opportunity for uh, for us to stand in, in front of the portrait of Governor Volpe and to take pictures. And this and this gentleman came over to me, and as we were taking the photograph, he said, "You know, I'm serious about that helicopter thing." And I said, "Yeah, I know you are." Um, and then he looked up and he said, "You know, you're pretty tall. I used to fly with a guy who was about your height. We called him too tall." And I looked at him and I said, that's funny, there's a guy named Ed Freeman who is also a Medal of Honor recipient. He won the Medal of Honor for uh, bravery in the Battle of Iodrad Valley during the Vietnam War when uh, the medevacs uh, were afraid to fly in and out of the war zone because it got too hot. He basically said to heck with that. And he flew in and out of that battle zone over and over and over again, removing uh, injured soldiers and providing supplies to the folks who were there on the ground. And I said, I think his flying buddy that day was a guy named Bruce Crandall. And so the guy looked up at me, he goes, right, Bruce Crandall, that's me. That's what I said when you came in. <laughs> and I said, I cannot believe I am standing in the presence of Bruce Crandall. You are a true American hero. And the story about Bruce Crandall is he was the commanding officer that day. And he was originally nominated for the Medal of Honor. And he chose not to accept that nomination and said instead that they should nominate Ed Freeman. Freeman was nominated and received the Medal of Honor and then several years later people came back to Bruce and said, you know, you really ought to let us nominate you. Um, you really led the charge that day and, and you deserve uh, consideration. And so Crandall eventually reluctantly agreed to let them uh, to nominate him and he was nominated and of course he did receive the Medal of Honor. And so when he finished, we finished this part where I said to him, I can't believe uh, you're standing in front of me, you're one of my heroes. He looked at me and said, well, does that mean I get my helicopter ride? And, uh, and unfortunately, uh, he had a, a medical procedure and he's not here today, but I was glad to know that many of the other folks involved did have an opportunity to get in a helicopter today. And, uh, and I do want all of us to remember um, those who aren't here with us, either who aren't here because uh, they didn't survive the circumstances in which they receive this honor or aren't here simply for other reasons, logistic, medical, or whatever. Um, this is truly, we have over 40 Medal of Honor recipients uh, here with us and their families, um, but there are over 70 uh, living currently here in this country and obviously uh, many, many more uh, who are no longer with us. And I think it's important that we remember them all and honor them all today as you grace us with your presence here in the Commonwealth of Mass and in the city of Boston. Let me just say one other thing about, uh, about this building. In that room over there on the other side, uh, there's a flag that flies for the 54th Regiment, which I think, as most people know, was the first African-American regiment to fight in the Civil War. Um, and after we got elected and before we took office, I went on a tour around the Commonwealth visiting a number of schools and other, um, other spots and I visited a school in New Bedford called uh, Kearney Academy. Now I didn't know much about Kearney Academy when I got there, but as I walked in the door I saw a mural of an African American soldier who fought in the Civil War on the wall and I asked about that and I was told that William Kearney was the first African-American to receive the Medal of Honor for bravery during the, um, the battle at uh, Fort Wagner in South Carolina. <laughs> now, 
that was an unbelievable quest, the, the quest to, uh, to secure that fort. Many, many men uh, died during that struggle. But Carney was actually in charge of keeping the flag up, and he was shot numerous times uh, during the course of that battle, but the flag never touched the ground. And afterwards he said, he only did his duty. Think about that. He only did his duty. And this has always been for me the most amazing thing about the people who serve this country. They do amazing things, but if you talk to them about it, it's always the same, I only did my duty. It's a book that I read a few years ago called Beyond Glory, which is sort of the oral histories of a number of the folks who are living who received the Medal of Honor. And the stories that they tell relative to what they accomplished and what they did are told in sort of that folksy way of, it was really nothing special, I was just looking out, looking out for my fellow, my fellow soldiers. But the stories themselves are stories of tremendous bravery and heroism. And I had a unique opportunity when I served in state government to serve with Tom Hutner, um, who's also a Medal of Honor recipient, who is former Secretary of Veterans Affairs here in the Commonwealth, and to get to know Tom Kelly, who succeeded Tom Hutner as the Secretary of Veterans Affairs here in the Commonwealth, both Medal of Honor recipients. You could spend years with those guys and never know about their military exploits. Because they didn't wear it on their sleeve, they didn't brag about it, they didn't talk about it, they would always say the real heroes are the ones who didn't come home. And I've always wondered about whether or not we truly appreciate the anonymity of valor. The fact that some of these men and women who've engaged in acts of extraordinary bravery under extreme circumstances, simply view it as almost just another day, doing what they could to protect their fellow soldiers and serve their country. The understated nature of the way they go about living their lives is truly amazing, especially in an age like the one we live in today, where so many people can't wait to tell you how great they are. And as I stand here today, the one message I want you to take away from us is how honored we've been to serve you and your families for the third time here in the Commonwealth of Mass. But I'm not kidding when I say that we would be honored to have you anytime. Anytime, any place, we can be there for you we will be there for you because you were there for us. Thank you very much.